I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my video blog. We're out here for day number two at Throwdown the Mountain number four, presented by Discraft Discs and Sun King Discs. There's been a threat of rain all week, so that's why Mike Barnett had already chosen that everyone's gonna play from the short tees today. So it's a considerably different course, much shorter. Still gotta hit your line, still gotta make your putts, but it is a much shorter course, and hopefully we're gonna move through it a little bit quicker. There was ridiculous amounts of rain and downpour in the morning round, so if you had a tee time that was early, yeah, you struggled through some of that. So far this afternoon, things look really good for this front nine. Let's see how they do. You're watching Throw It on the Mountain by the Disc Golf Guy. Hi, I'm Justin Lammers. I'm sponsored by Sun King and Pandemonium Disc Sports, and I was negative six when Ken won his first title. Hello, my name is David Eilers. I'm from Tampa, Florida. I'm sponsored by the Clearwater Air Command. And in 1990, I was 12 years old, already playing disc golf, but not like Ken. I'm Ken Climo, sponsored by Innova Champion Discs, Keen Shoes, and Upper Park Designs Disc Golf Bags. I was 22 years old when I won my first world championship in 1990. Hey, I'm James Cole from Chattanooga, Tennessee, sponsored by Innova Champion Discs and Mark Cole Painting. Uh, I was only one years old when Kenny won his first worlds. Hey, Kobe Geis, uh, sponsored by Prodigy Disc, Wolfpack Disc, and here and there, Disc Golf. I was four years old when Ken Climo won his first world title. We'll see you out there, Ken. And welcome, everyone. I have David with a putt here to get the round started and maybe a little first hole jitters here. James is making quick work here. David's got a little more of a tester than anyone's looking for, especially on your first hole when you're putting for birdie. But he shows you why he shot the sec the hottest round, I should say, tied for the hottest round during the opening day on Friday. Kobe, we watched him play on Friday as well, along with Ken Climo. This shortened course, as I mentioned earlier, is gonna play a little bit quicker and easier for all of our competitors. We see everyone's on the green and Justin Lammers, literally two feet away. Much easier hole number two here once you move to this short tee. And had his nose been up just a little bit, he might have been able to actually to skip over that. Uh, get out of there. Climo's driver turns too much. I believe that's a T bird. He's been throwing it quite a bit for the last two days. Kobe, exact same result as we found with Justin's. And the wind seemed to just push that straight down. And sure enough, David, Justin, and Kobe all within a few inches of one another. Kenny's left with a little forehand. Justin, Kobe, and Dave all pretty much just have short and easy layups. We're going to let them clean things up here. James has to do the same. As you can see, everyone's within 10 feet after Kenny's putt. We'll move on to the next hole.
similar shot that we find from the long tee. It's just this one is about 75 feet, maybe 100 feet shorter. And I wasn't expecting James to go up and around. We see so many shots go right up the middle. And from the short tee, James decides to go with the high hyzer route. And then Kobe follows suit. And Dave, again, going straight up the middle, a little bit more traditional, so to speak. And it's too bad we don't have another camera up there. We were told that that was a very nice looking shot as it came in. I can only be in so many places at so many times, I guess. Sorry. Awkward stance there for David. And Kenny had this dialed in yesterday on his approach shot. And today you're going to find that similar result. Justin also with an awkward stance that actually carries OB over the barbed wire fence. It will come with a penalty stroke and you can take up to two meters from the barbed wire fence. It's a special ruling. However, Justin only takes the one meter. And that's all he needs. What a huge putt. That's going to save him the four, which is considered par on this hole. James for the birdie. And a little extra flip there. Kobe's in for birdie. And Kenny actually closer than he was yesterday. He left himself with about a 12 footer today. About five or six feet for the birdie. This one also moves about a hundred feet closer and great shot there by Kenny. James looked like he may have slipped or just had a little too much hyzer right out of his hand on the release. And for the second day in a row Kobe gets a little love tap off of a tree. He could have done without that one. Very smooth for the young gun from Wisconsin. I believe Justin's just 19 years old. David with a layup. And Kobe with a solid run. Just Flat flips out on the back side. Justin's in for birdie. Justin and Kenny, the only two here, are going to be carting the birdies. Kenny's pretty much parked. So two birdies and a few pars. Moving on to the short. Yeah, just <laughs> Hole number five. looking run by Kenny. You really need to be relatively close on this hole otherwise you're looking at a layup. Justin goes a little wide there. And trying to give it the touch and the finesse that's needed here. James goes long. And David with a I believe is a sonic there. 
and Kobe heading toward the OB. And as I mentioned earlier, you, you get up to two meters here. And it's a mandatory two meters, correct? No. You sure? No, up to two meters. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Kenny giving the clarification. Like anytime you're near an OB line, you can bring it in up to one meter typically. However, seeing that it's barbed wire fence, they made an ex special rule exception to give you two full meters. And Kenny's got nothing but a layup there. James with the final birdie attempt on the hole. Sadly enough, all five competitors walk away with pars there. Welcome back to hole six. Sure. Kenny, you're working with some footing there on this relatively short pad. Yesterday it was really no problem, but with all the people that have come through, plus the just tons of rain, really made that, as you see James slide a little bit, made that tee a little more treacherous than it really should be. I'd like to thank Discraft and Sun King for their support. Of course, Discraft and Sun King, the presenting sponsors here at the Throwdown the Mountain 4. Oh. And Kenny is just a bit off there. Interesting fact. One of the shorter holes on the courses, and Kenny is actually... 0 for 2. Two attempts and two pars thus far. Solid putt by Kobe. And Justin gets a little, uh, little elevator down action. That very easily could have slid out on him. He'll take it though and move on. James with a Short birdie. Not too often you find Ken Climo the only par on a card, especially in of a group of five. I decided to move down this hillside to give you guys a better angle here on this view. I was actually pretty happy with how it looked. Now we can see just how close players are getting when they're coming down. It's really just a big righty hyzer as you can see. Love giving you the action from over the shoulder or behind the players as if you were playing it. However, sometimes, especially in a case like this on a blind hole where I can get the entire flight of the disc and it's relative to the basket, just makes so much more sense, I think. I really love the angle here. And all five of these players making this hole look relatively easy. We'll see who can convert. Hmm. High chain there for James. And also for David. Seems to be a theme here. And just catching on that back right side. Justin will take another birdie. Mr. Kobe with no problems.
be curious to know if anyone can guess what Kenny is putting with. I'm going to give you a hint. It is not a KC AVR at the moment. Not at least this weekend. Hole 8 from the long tee proved to be very 3Z or par like yesterday. I believe all five competitors, no correction, not all five competitors. Kelvin had an issue with rolling OB, but we saw a lot of pars there yesterday. And we move it up about 75 feet here. <laughs> and it looks like these guys are also having troubles even when it's 75 feet closer. It's a 150 AVR. Slide a little bit. Uh, slip there by David. Kenny could use a little bit more turn on that. Maybe a different angle of release. Kobe's going to lay it up. Kind of a half run, half layup there by David. Somewhat aggressive. Definitely aggressive there by James. And Justin doesn't get it to drop, however, it does sit down and saves him from going OB. Kenny with the straddle putt for par. David with a little tester. No problems. A number of times you'll see some chains on any given basket. Sometimes maybe not hang the way they're supposed to, so players will go up and adjust them. Make sure that they're all hanging freely the way they were intended to. Looks like everyone's going to be tapping out here. All five competitors carting par threes here on the 260 foot turnover shot on hole number eight. This is just a gorgeous shot. This is where we saw the drop zone yesterday, otherwise known as the short tee here on hole number nine. Calvin Heimberg and a few other players off the second and third cards put some pretty good crushes out there as there was a huge backup. I believe we waited somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 minutes. Two or three cards on this hole waiting as we got to it. And thankfully there has not been any rain as of this point. Plenty of rain in the morning, but it's been very dry all round thus far. The round started at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. I want to say it was going on close to 5 o'clock at this point. Kenny with a nice approach just past the basket. And Kobe could have used a little bit more power, however, he's putting. David's got a fight through that got past. I didn't even see it come past. And James is throwing from, he said he had one of the tiniest windows he's ever hit when throwing that shot. A little trickery there by Justin. And boom. Huge birdie putt. Take the three there by David. Kobe talking about how he had adjusted the chain links right before he putted. One of them was out of out of alignment. Justin doesn't have very far to the basket, but an awkward stance. And we'd like to have that one back. Yep. 
Kenny with a solid birdie. We'll see James for birdie. That's our front nine. Good luck.